to Playbook for Performance, the official podcast of Shauna Corden, the Joan of Arc for corporate healing and performance. Join the quest to make work fun again by preparing leadership for engaging workplaces. And now, your host. Hello and welcome everybody to another edition of the Playbook for Performance podcast. We're happy to have you here. Our mission is to make work fun again by building better leaders. I'm your host, I'm Shauna Corden, and this month we are talking about restoring your integrity. Specifically today, we're going to talk about boundaries, standards, and preferences. Now, we talked about this a little bit last month when we were talking about spring cleaning your life and creating some of these things, but we want to go into more detail about what this will do for you and what this does for your integrity. So as a reminder, when we talk about integrity in the field of coaching, we are not talking about a moral compass of right and wrong. I think that the definition of integrity has changed of late, and it suggests that people are using the word of integrity like Uh, character. Two different things. So when we're talking about integrity, we're talking about the structure of something. We're talking about it being whole. And that is something that we always strive for as coaches. One of the fundamental beliefs that we have is that our clients are creative, resourceful, and whole. And so when it comes to integrity, that's one of the things that we're really looking for. Do we see our clients splintering in a certain direction? Do we see behaviors that are incongruous with what they state their values to be? And is it because they've got boundaries or standards or preferences that are different than the ideal? Now, I've been uh, studying up a bit on this with Martha Beck's work. I'm a big Martha Beck fan. I think she has just an absolutely wicked sense of humor, which I really love. And I was comparing notes on my beliefs on this, her beliefs on this, and I find it very interesting. Uh, We both think that there's a somatic connection to this in that when people feel that they are straying or splintering from their personal integrity, they notice uh, bodily conflicts. This may present itself as ulcers, stomach aches, headaches. Uh, frequent illnesses, a decreased immune system response, etc. And I've seen that with my own clients over and over again. And so what we really want to talk about in today's podcast is this idea of how boundaries and standards can help you and how you can honor your own preferences. So Really what we need to do to do this is make sure that we understand our purpose front and center. Uh, For those of you who have grown up in the Christian tradition, um, one of the things that this brings to mind for me is that hymn, uh, Hark the Voice of Jesus Calling. So it's this idea of who will go and work today. The harvest is ready to uh, reap. And... This whole idea about some people will use excuses about, well, I can't do that, or I, you know, they'll never hire a woman to do this. You know, I'm not in the right zip code for this. Uh, I don't have the money to start this, etc. But the idea being that if if you can't do that, what can you do? And putting that purpose front and center. So I have shared this story before, but it's. it's such a great anecdote. I want to share it again. It's this idea of voluntary simplicity. This is a movement. It was a book that if I believe I'm pronouncing his name right, Dwayne Elgin wrote years and years ago, probably 15, 20 years ago, I went through the voluntary simplicity group work with some colleagues uh, at my old company. And one of my colleagues was really into biking, really into biking. (laughs) And uh, he started our, I think it was a 12-week course, he started it with seven bicycles. By the end of the course, he had grown to, I believe, 12 bicycles. So hear me out. 
as we did this um, analysis of our purpose, um, our values, all of that, he recognized that he had been telling himself seven bicycles is way too much. I need to simplify. But as we analyzed how he spends his time, how he exercises, uh, what his family does for social activity, um, fitness, so on and so on, bicycling was the number one thing. And so he decided to double down on that and then let go of the things that he had that he was doing once or twice a year. And if I remember correctly, he had some canoes and he had some tents and things like that for camping, but the family really didn't enjoy it that much. It was taking up a lot of space. They didn't do it that frequently. And so they gave themselves permission to let go of those items and actually get more bicycles that would uh, help them do more things socially together, to go longer distances, things like that. So sometimes by knowing that purpose and keeping it front and center, it actually simplifies our life and it helps us stay in integrity. And so again, we're talking about are we whole? So he looked at this situation of his tents and canoes and things like that as splinters from that central purpose of his family being a biking family. But what might it be for you? It might be that your children have too many extracurricular activities. You value family time, yet Monday through Friday, and probably Saturday too, you've got 15 minutes in the car driving between events and you're eating in the car before practice, recital, um, rehearsal, whatever it might be. Um, and so if you simplified, if you narrowed down your children's activities, would that help? So, and would that put that value of family time together more front and center? Okay. So again, when we're looking at integrity and we're talking about these boundaries and standards and preferences, we're really looking at how can you honor this and make it simple because the benefit of really knowing your values and acting in accordance of those values is that decisions become very, very easy. So in the case of my colleague that grew his bicycle collection, it was easy for him when friends said, hey, do you want to go camping? They'd go, no. <laughs> you know, number one, they... they enjoyed their time bicycling better. Number two, they had let go of the equipment that would help facilitate that. Number three, they could always invite their friends to bicycle with them and, and that would keep it front and center. So what are the things in your life that are incoherent? If you imagine yourself as an airplane, you know, we want everything to be buckled down tight um, and flying smoothly. But what are the things in your life that are causing, you know, the, the plane to shake a little bit, that everything isn't in alignment, that um, perhaps pieces of the plane will peel off because the structure is not as tight as it should be. So the, the number one thing that I see with my clients in this case is they say one thing and they do the other. And yet it would be far more simple for them to simply give themselves some grace, right? Uh, I did not realize that term grace under pressure came. I just read this this morning, darn it. And I can't remember who it was. Grace under pressure, right? We want this idea of, of what we're doing, our words and our actions to match. And so an example I gave to a client earlier today if you say, I eat very healthily, and yet every night around eight o'clock, you crack open that Hagen dazs no judgment here, then you're out of integrity. You're not doing as you said. But if you changed your words to say, I eat very cleanly through the day, and I allow myself a treat at night, then you would be in integrity. And so that's what we're talking about here is changing the language 
that you use, your descriptions, what you tell yourself to match what you actually do in real life. Now, we know from research that the number one way to build our self-esteem is to keep our commitments to ourselves. Each time that you say something that's out of alignment with how you really behave, you're actually degrading that self-esteem. And why is self-esteem important? Because that's what gives us courage to try new things outside our comfort zone, to try more challenging things, to live up to our potential. But if our self-esteem is down in the dumps because we have way too many of these splintering activities, things that we say but we don't do, then we really suffer for that. So think about all of the things that you have going in your life where you say one thing, but you do another. Could be your exercise routine, could be your faith-based study, could be um, your relationship with your friends, uh, saying that family's first, but they're getting the least amount of your time. Uh, all of those things are really good examples of the, our values and our standards and what we say and do being out of alignment. So how can we honor what we determine is that front and center thing? Well, we can simplify. We can do as my colleague did and get rid of the canoes, the tents, and other things that distract us from that thing that really brings us joy and is truly something that we believe is important and valuable and something we really need to honor. So own it is basically what we're saying. Own who you are, be honest with who you are, create that awareness. So one of the techniques that we can use to really honor this is something that uh, we're borrowing from the, the great writer, Julia Cameron, uh, who wrote the book, The Artist's Way. One of the activities that she highly recommends is something she calls an artist date, where once a week you make a date with yourself, not for others. Uh, this is not a time to be deferential or compromise anything else. This is truly uh, something that feeds you and feeds you only with no other influence. And you do that. Now, an artist date might be laying in the grass and staring at the clouds. An artist date might be writing. Uh, an artist date might be going to look at great art. An artist date might be um, poking through an antique store and seeing what you find. It might be creating something. Uh, but it's, it's really one of those things that we want to, in this case, what we want to do is choose a time to honor the things that we say are important to us. That way we can build that muscle to be more consistent and therefore in, in integrity. So think about for yourself, this is part of the homework for this week. Remember, coaching without homework is just entertainment. We, we really want to honor that and take that action. What would you choose in terms of that purpose to be front and center? And what would you choose for the artist date to be that would help reinforce that and help you be consistent with what you claim is truly important to you? Now, a couple things that can assist you with this. Uh, we want to lean on those boundaries and standards that we talked about last month. That means keeping the bad stuff out that interferes with the things that you say are front and center um, and keeping the good stuff in. This might be protecting your calendar. This might be uh, hanging out with people who have similar values. This might be investigating opposite values. Uh, but we really want to look at what it is, what's true for you, and keep those boundaries and standards up to date. And if, if you missed our podcast on boundaries and standards, a quick little recap is that boundaries are basically our personal force field that keeps bad stuff out, good stuff in. 
And an example of boundaries is I don't let people tell racist jokes around me. That's a boundary. You know, I don't work on Saturday or Sunday. That's a boundary. I take a two week vacation uh, every year and I don't bring my laptop. That's a boundary. So those are some examples. Standards are how you choose to behave yourself. What is important to you and how you conduct yourself. And so those same things that I just mentioned as boundaries, those could be your personal standards. I always take a two week vacation. I never bring my laptop. I always bring my own reusable bag. I don't use single use water bottles, so on and so on and so on. Now we wanna be really careful how we phrase these things again, because we don't want to be in the place where we're out of integrity. So if I say my personal standard is I never use reusable water bottles, or I'm sorry, I never use single use water bottles. What happens when I go to um, a sporting event and I want to have water and they do not permit reusable water bottles uh, at the gate? Okay, that what am I gonna do? Not drink any water? <laughs> so that's one of the things where you have to allow yourself some grace and add phrases that are like whenever possible or as long as it's allowed, things like that. So those are some tips on those boundaries and standards. Uh, I also want to share a little bit more about this integrity piece in terms of how we really get in touch with what's important to us and how we need to phrase those things. So probably 90% of my clients, when I first start working with them, they're not really sure what they want. They, they've hired me, they're unsatisfied with their life uh, or their work, but they really don't know what they want, but they know plenty well what they don't want, okay? So an example of this would be, you know, I, I don't wanna work on weekends, I'm tired of traveling all the time, I want to uh, improve my life, but they haven't said how that's important. So sometimes that's a good start, is that idea of a process of elimination. So if I hear that same example that I just offered, then I'm gonna go to, so what I'm hearing is you want more of a nine to five job without you know, um, exception pay, or on-call status. It's like, yeah. So, but I think the way that my clients get that way, the way that they get to the point where they're, they don't know what they want is they have gotten lazy when it comes to their preferences. A lot of us get into the mode because we're so exhausted to say, I don't care, whatever you want. So your partner might ask you, what do you want for dinner? It's like, I don't care, whatever you want. Where do you want to go? I don't care, whatever you want. Uh, that is pretty lazy. <laughs> it's also frustrating to your partner. And so I would like you to eliminate those phrases from your vocabulary altogether. And practice. At a, at, at a minimum, just say, you know what? I'm not in the mood for Mexican food today. I really think that Thai or, you know, something would be better. You know, I don't want fast food. I don't want to eat meat. I don't want this. Again, you're learning more about what you want. I want something fresh. I want to be served at a table. I want some vegetables. I want something uh, prepared, you know, not on a grill, whatever that might be. So get in touch with yourself about things. Throughout the day, each day, whether you're sitting in traffic, whether you're doing your morning commute, whether you're sitting at the, the coffee shop trying to get work done, think about what do I prefer? So it might be, I don't wanna be at a corner table, or I love being at a corner table, or I'd really like a booth, or I don't like having a booth. It could be, I want my coffee not so hot, 
Um, it could be, I need it practically boiling. But really naming those preferences out loud. Uh, and I would encourage you to jot them in a book, uh, put them in your phone, in your notes, things like that, and build up that list of what you do want or definitely what you don't want at least. Another way to help get in touch with yourself and what those preferences and values are is um, a tip that I have taken from the Wall Street Journal. Occasionally in the off-duty section, they run a uh, feature called 20 Odd Questions where they will take a chef, an inventor, something, and basically pose to them 20 odd questions. It could be, you know, what's the most frequently uh, used app on your phone? Uh, the last place you lost your phone, the book that meant the most to you when you were growing up, your perfect Saturday morning, uh, whatever it is that fills your cup. So this could be journaling, this could be doodling, it could be naming, you know, what are your favorite breeds of dogs? <laughs> What's your favorite tennis shoe and why? Uh, what sports do you love to watch on television and you don't? doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter what the questions are, but the, the point of the exercise is to really practice being decisive and knowing what your preferences are. So I've done this a number of different ways. Uh, when I see something that I find is interesting, I'm going to make a note of it. I'm going to say, hmm, that might be something I want to incorporate. How would I make it mine? That could be an option. It might be, I've tried these three things. I know this. So here's an example. Uh, I know this is sacrilege, so I apologize in advance. Um, Oregon is Pinot Noir country. I personally am not a Pinot Noir fan. <laughs> I feel like it's a watered down good wine. And all my friends and my husband say, you just haven't had the right one. Well, I've had a lot of them. And they're not my favorite. And I enjoy them. They're just not my favorite. And so if I have a choice, I'm going to go for a Zinfandel or something like that. I like, you know, a, a fruitier wine that's that's bolder, etc. So um, as I accumulate things, you know, I'm not trying to convince anybody of anything. <laughs> but um, as I accumulate my likes, I like to note them. I've got, you know, a little journal of this is how I like doing this. This was my experience doing this. Next time I do this, I want more of this. And so practicing that over and over again can really help you out in terms of getting to know your likes and what would create the boundaries that would protect those likes. And are there any standards that you need to enact in order to really reinforce those likes. So again, going back to a field work for this week, thinking about your integrity, what we wanna do is look at what is your purpose, front and center? What are you about? What actions and words do you have totally in alignment? And how can you rephrase how you talk about yourself so that you are in integrity? Uh, I am a huge fan of the, the biblical phrase, the truth shall set you free. And I strive for truth in everything I say. I want to correct uh, anything that I mistake. And so as I use my words, I try to be really careful because I don't want to put myself in a situation where I am in conflict and I'm lowering my self-esteem. So homework this week, think about purpose front and center, how you can honor it, choose that artist date that's going to help you honor that, practice eliminating from your vocabulary, I don't care, or whatever you want, practice what you do want, give yourself an extra five seconds to answer the question, and then come up with your own 20 odd questions. Start journaling your perfect Saturday, your ideal morning, your ideal coworker, all of that. 
I find I'll I will bet and I would love to hear your comments. You can send them to podcast at shawnacordon.com. But I'm gonna guess from your comments that what you come up with is going to be really satisfying. And if you're careful with your words, you are gonna be eager to fulfill those week after week. So that's all for this week. Uh, Next week, we're going to be talking more about this theme of integrity. So don't forget to like and subscribe at the button below. And we'll look forward to seeing you all next week. Take good care. Thank you for listening to Playbook for Performance. To learn more about Shauna Corden, her consulting programs and tools, please visit her website at shaunacorden.com and follow us on social media at Shauna Corden.